Surprise Comics. In this video, we're gonna talk about this deal that I just did where I actually bought a grail for a subscriber and I'm really surprised that it worked out. I'm actually really glad that it worked out because I think a lot of other people will jump on an opportunity like this. I know a lot of people are out there chasing those hard to get grails like Amazing Fantasy 15s, whatever your grail might be. And I think that this little scenario uh, might be something that somebody else would be interested in doing and I would like to do it again. Um, and stick with me till the end of the video because there's a lot of interesting points at every turn of this uh, transaction that I think are worth talking about. But before we hop into it too far, I want to remind you we have a monthly giveaway here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, comment, and like, you're entered to win a free slab each and every month. We also have a monthly giveaway over at brisecomics.com. If you subscribe to the newsletter over there, you're entered to win a free slab each month and you also get first access to new collections as they come through the shop. Use code COLLECT10 for 10% off all in stock items i almost forgot to mention we are going to be back on instagram friday april 28th at 5 p.m pacific time we're going to go till about 8 p.m pacific time with guest dj steven from minor keys comics i was editing the promotion for this and it has been one year to the day that we did a live sale on instagram with steven um, so we're back it's going to be a night of giveaways awesome discounts on slabs and i really hope to see you there over on my instagram page at bry's comics. I also want to give a shout out to my buddy Nixon. Nixon and I just closed a deal where Nixon uh, sent me some raw books, some TMNT errors, and some other really cool books. I had them pressed and cleaned uh, at my shop. We sent them off to CGC to be graded. They came back and we worked out a deal. No money out of pocket for Nixon and Nixon was able to pick up some new books and add some cash. So congratulations to you Nixon. Thanks for the, the awesome smooth deal and I hope to uh, stay in touch with you as your comic journey continues um, and so shout out to you Nixon. All right so the deal and the grail that I bought was this bad boy right here Edge of Spider-Verse number two 9.8 double signed double sketch. I am a huge fan of modern books. You'll see a lot of my personal collection has modern books. That's how I got into collecting was modern books and this is a book that I absolutely would not mind having especially at the price that that I bought it for and we're gonna get into all of that right here but this belongs to a subscriber of mine my friend Zach we're gonna call him my friend Zach because at this point he's been following the channel for years we go back and forth on social media all the time one time in a whatnot show uh, I kind of opened up a little bit got a little emotional and he actually sent me you know a handwritten note saying uh, just showing his support and I pinned that note above my desk over at the brick and mortar shop uh, so my friend Zach reached out to me and said dude there is a copy of Edge of Spider-Verse 2, a 9.8, double signed, double sketched by the creators that's coming up on eBay. I have to have that book. Is there any way I can, you can buy that book for me and I'll trade you whatever I got to do. Sacrifices will need to be made. You know, pretty much everything's on the chopping block for this. I got to have that book. And I said, yeah, let's talk about it. I'd love to do something like this. So what are you thinking? Send me the list of books that you have available for trade. So he sent me a list of books and he also threw into the mix some gold and silver. He said, I know that you've been dipping your toes into the waters of collecting precious metals. And I also have, you know, X amount of gold and X amount of silver that I can throw in there to make it happen. So he sends me the list of books. He shows me how much gold and silver he has. It comes to X amount of dollars. And I say, well, what's my max bid going to be? And he said, well, dude, listen, like I have more stuff I can throw in. I can definitely make it work. Uh, it, we just got to get this book. And I go, OK, so what is my max bid? And he said, well, what is the fair market value? What do you think is a good price for this book? So I look at GPA and the most recent sale was recently in March uh, for a 9.8 of this book, but it was a blue label, a non-signed version sold for uh, just shy of $6,200. So the market has come down a little bit since March. Um, and so I said, considering that this is double signed, double sketch, which you don't see every day for this book, I think the fair market value is about $6,500. I think that would be a 
good deal. And he said, well, I'm willing to pay more than that. I'm willing to pay $7,500 for that book. So let's make that my max trade. And if whatever I have to do, we'll make it work so the numbers work on your end. So you can make some money as well to make this worth your while. And so essentially what it comes down to is I'm buying his books at 60% of fair market value. The gold and silver is just a wash. It's basically cash. And I'll talk more about that in a second because it's actually uh, really interesting. Um, so I would have preferred it to have been all books because that's where I'm going to make my money. I'm not going to make any money off the gold and silver. But um, when it's all said and done, I think it'll be about a thousand dollars profit, which is absolutely great. I love that. Um, you know, it is a lot of work and there's a lot of other stuff involved in this. You know, I'm putting my money out there. I'm tying my money up for, you know, however long it takes to make all of these transactions, to actually sell all these books. And then there's the bigger part of it, which is the unknown factor of buying something off eBay, especially a big book like this. And in fact, when Zach actually reached out to me for the first time, he said, does this look legit? Because this book was sitting around two, 300 bucks for the first few days. Um, and it's interesting because I looked at the listing. I thought, you know, it does look legit. The seller didn't have any other high value books. He had a bunch of low value books. Um, but Zach was uneasy about it. He was like, something just doesn't feel quite right about it. It turns out it's absolutely legit. There's nothing fishy about this at all. Um, but you know, when I got this book in the mail, I had my wife film me opening it uh, because I it felt a little light in the box and I'm going, oh my God, did we get scammed uh, You know, for this? And uh, it turns out it wasn't a scam. It was 100% legit above table. But the fact that Zach was concerned and the fact that I became a little concerned after he said that means that other people were likely concerned too. And so the big tip here is if you have a big book like this, maybe it's Edge of Spider-Verse 2, uh, maybe it's an Ultimate Fallout 4, Dejerjevic variant, uh, maybe it's just a bigger book and you don't have a bunch of other bigger books. Even if you do have other bigger books on eBay, I mean, personally, I would never send a book like this to auction at eBay. I think you're just setting yourself up for a really low sale of the book, like an anomaly low sale. Um, it's better, I think, to send it to a bigger auction house, you know, do it as a buy it now, accept a lower price if you're willing to, to but just don't send it to auction. Uh, you'll see a lot of these low sales because people don't have the confidence in buying a big book like this. Yes, you have the eBay protection, but you're going to have your money tied up for a long time. It's going to be a huge hassle and a huge headache. And I think a lot of people just bow out until unless it's a really good deal for these big books on eBay. So $7,500 is gonna be my max bid. I'm sitting at a birthday party for my son. It's two o'clock in the afternoon, I believe, on a Saturday. And I've got the phone like this because I'm trying to be present for my son's birthday party and I'm putting in my, la my max bid at the last second and I'm like, $7,500 place bid at the last second. And then you just see that circle wheel thing, the loading symbol, and you're like, oh my God, did I win? Did I win? Did I win? I had to switch to another screen, switch back, and I pull it out my phone and it says that I won the auction for $4,900 and some change and I am shocked. I thought holy smokes that is a screaming deal for this book. Less than $5,000. He was willing to pay $7,500 for that book. That was my max bid but I was the highest bidder under $5,000. I think we just got a really good deal even in today's market. So that's one of the beauties of this trade is that dollar amount is the dollar that we're making the deal for, the $4,938 or whatever it was. Not the $7,500 that he was willing to pay. No, we're making this deal based off the $4,938. Another bonus about this is being that I am a reseller, I have a reseller permit, so I don't have to pay sales tax on eBay purchases. So there's no tax on it because I'm gonna resell the item. Um, so just a screaming deal. Let's flip the camera around. We'll talk about the gold and silver portion of it. I still haven't gotten Zach's books. They're going to be here tomorrow. And so tomorrow, um, I'll film a second part of this and we'll go through the actual books that Zach sent. And then this book will be sent out to Zach, but he did already send me the silver. And in fact, I've already sold the gold and silver and it's going to be shipped out tomorrow. So let's flip the camera around. And I'll talk about that. 
All right, so here's the breakdown of the gold and silver. It was seven grams and 0.15 ounces of gold, which the spot price at the time was $917.87. For the silver is 65 ounces, which the spot price was $1,658. Uh, the total of both coming to $2,576. And we'll talk more about the price of silver and what I decided to do uh, with that. So here's some of the silver. Here's uh, another, I think a gram uh, of gold, another little piece of gold here, another piece of gold here. This one's really cool. Uh, at max, this one is, uh, this one is five gram gold bar in there and another one twentieth of an ounce. And the rest of this is silver. So you got some cool stuff here like this, a 10 ounce bar, I believe this one is 10 troy ounces. The, the hefty weight of this stuff is really cool. Here's another 10 ounce bar. This one has a lion on it. Just really awesome and really cool to see. I love, you know, gold and silver bullion like this, another 10 ounce bar from the Sunshine Mint, and then uh, some buffalo head, some Indian head buffalo uh, on the reverse, and a whole bunch of one ounce bars here. All right, so how does this work for the gold and silver? And I had to wrap my brain around this because I'm still just getting started with gold and silver, and I was just trying to figure out uh, you know what I should do with it. So I contacted my tax accountant and I said what if somebody wanted to uh, Buy a comic book from me and pay me in gold or silver and, and I said what would the scenario be if I wanted to keep the gold and silver for myself? And what would the scenario be if I wanted to just turn around and sell the gold and silver and her response was Please don't do that just, just don't do that. Have them sell the gold and silver and just pay you in cash. It'll be so much easier if you do that. Well, as you can see, you're looking at the silver here. Uh, I, I thought I, I can make it work, even if it's a little complicated, you know, we'll figure it out. So what I decided to do is sell the gold and silver. That way I don't have to keep anything for myself and then it's just uh, cash as, you know, part of income and I'll pay taxes on on it that way but the way that works out since i'm actually not making any money off of the gold and silver i'm not going to pay any income tax on it because i didn't make a profit on it so you only have to pay income tax on profit made and uh you know i gave uh, Zach credit for $2,576 for this gold and silver and then I ended up selling it to my friend for $2,600 which is below which is spot price um, which I could have got more for it but it's my buddy Mike you saw the video I did with Mike uh, where I went to his house and we did the Silver Age Avengers sale on my whatnot he's become a buddy of mine he likes gold and silver too so I you know just sold it to him at spot price I don't need to squeeze every penny out of this uh, you know when friends are involved but I talked to another guy who actually has a coin shop and he says that he's paying 17 or he's paying $27.50 for silver uh, which is about $2.50 over spot so the shop would have actually the coin shop would have actually gave me more money for this than I sold it uh, to Mike for but again you know I don't need to squeeze every penny out of it so Here's the rest of the numbers here. So Zach's books, he sent me the list of books and we'll uh, go through the books here in just a sec. Um, but his books, the fair market value is $4,025. At 60% is $2,415. So $2,415 plus the $2,576 in metals comes to $4,991. Uh, so that's how much Zach, you know, paid for his books. So my potential profit here is $1,610 minus fees because the only thing I'm going to make money on is these books. But after selling fees, after bringing these books to whatnot, paying my overhead and everything, I'll be lucky to make a thousand dollars, which again is absolutely nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, I'm totally happy with the deal, but you know, I did have to put up uh, $5,000 of my money. There was some risk involved and there's a lot of work involved. I'm going to work for that money. So I'm really happy that the deal worked out the way that it did. I'm super stoked that we got 
bought the book for as good of a price as we did. That makes the whole thing so much sweeter. I would have been less excited about the deal if I did have to put out $7,500 um, because that's a lot of money to put out for a little bit of profit. So the $5,000 mark was like, a, you know, a lot easier to swallow. I think it's a great price. You know, at, as the more I see Spider Gwen in pop culture, the bigger of a foothold and like just presence that she has in pop culture, the better of an investment I think that she is. Now, is now the best time to invest in Spider Gwen and Miles Morales type keys? That's up to you to decide. I, I This market is so dang volatile. Um, it's hard to say. We'll likely see way better times to buy in. Um, but there will be a time in the near future where it should be like all in on those two characters because they will they will bounce back and they will have a really strong presence in pop culture for years to come. So I think it will be a good investment at some point, at which point, if, if anybody actually knew, you know, they would have a crystal ball. So let's take a look at the books that Zach sent in for trade for this book. All right, so I'm not gonna do a full uh, unboxing of all of these books here. I'm just gonna show you guys some of the highlights and kind of flip through them. This is the most expensive book of the bunch, 9.8 white pages, newsstand edition of Amazing Spider-Man 361, the first appearance of Carnage. What an awesome book. Um, first appearance of Cindy Moon in a 9.8. Here is a book that is so interesting. Uh, I gave him $240 in value on this, and I just went off of a 0.5... I don't know if I saw that it was restored uh, when I, now that I'm looking at it, maybe I just gave him the price for a 0.5, but it's no big deal. I gave him $240 in value, but this thing has it all. It is a uh, small amount of r color touch on cover, small amount of glue on spine, top edge trimmed, right edge trimmed, wrong back cover, tape on cover. I mean, you name it, this thing uh, has it, but it presents well and it looks cool if you could just ignore the label. Maybe just crack it out and put it in Mylar so you can enjoy looking at it. And then um, some other really cool books, a lot of, uh, you know, awesome stuff that's uh, easy to sell. Uh, but nothing super high value, just, um, you know, some awesome spec books, some modern stuff, things like that. Uh, here is one uh, 10 cent detective, but it's not a super pricey one, a 6.0 um, and some other uh, modern spec stuff. This book is a total sleeper right now. This is the first appearance of Phyla Vell in a 9.8. I'm sure this is completely dropped off everybody's radar and off the charts as far as value go, but I do think it's a good um, spec book. A couple copies here of Gambit. Um, I love this book. Um, in nine four, it's obviously it's not worth much, but this is the first solo series for Magic. She's not actually called Magic in this series, or maybe it's like later in the series that she's actually referred to as Magic, but it's funny that it is the title from issue number one. Second print of Young Avengers 1. I think that's an awesome undervalued book. Um, first Black Cat and a 7.0. Some Daredevil stuff. First Echo. Oh, there's a... Uh, I, did, I forgot that this was in there. Thor 134. First appearance of the High Evolutionary. Get ready for that book to fall off the charts as well. Um, and some awesome stuff. Uh, I'm really happy about this collection. This is a cool book. Uh, Marvel Comics number 1000. The Art Germ variant signed by Art Germ. Just a beautiful, beautiful book. Love the cover art on that. So there you have it, folks. Uh, just a really awesome deal that had pretty much a little bit of everything involved in it. Thanks again to Zach for making this happen. Uh, thanks for supporting me all this time, bud. I really appreciate you. Um, thanks to you guys for coming along with us for the ride. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like this video for your chance to win a free slab each and every month here on the YouTube channel. And head over to BriceComics.com. Sign up for the newsletter for your chance to win another free slab. Use code COLLECT10 for for 10% off uh, all in-stock items, including uh, some of these books that came from Zach. And then a lot of them will be brought to Whatnot, where we do $1 starts um, on slabs and raw books. And it's a ton of fun over on Whatnot. Use the link down in the description if you're new to Whatnot and get $15 towards your first purchase. Thanks as always for sticking with me to the end of the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.